Hey, this is Mr. Mark, and in this video, I'd like to show you some updates I made to the eBay profit sheet. Uh, for one, when you open this eBay profit sheet, it's very important that you go to file, make a copy, and create your own copy. I've had a few people contact me um, with their request for access. Um, you're not supposed to do that because then you would be changing the original. You have to make your own copy, okay, like I just did. You go to file, make a copy. All right, you can put a name here if you want to change the name. You can do that. I'll take this stuff out. And then you just click OK. And you'll have your own copy of the sheet. OK, that's number one. Now, um, first of all, I'd like to point out a few things, a few things that have changed and a few things that are the same. For one, you still have supplier. For instance, just as an example, let's just say your supplier was Amazon and uh, you had a product number. Okay, if that applies in your case from your supplier, then you have the name of the product. For instance, uh, I'll just put um, sneakers as an example. And let's say the price uh, was 50 um, and the tax was 5 and the shipping was $5. And then you have other, if you have any other cost, you could add them here. Or if you have um, something that you want to subtract from the cost, you could use a, use a negative number instead. And here's your total cost, $60. Okay, so that's pretty much the same as usual. And then the break-even is calculated using this somewhat complicated formula. Um, but one thing that has changed, uh, eBay is charging you the PayPal fee based on the buyer's complete payment including tax including tax all right so that's something i have to point out here so before i do that uh let's say the break even is 69.23 so if i put 69.23 for my price my profit should be zero but this is if there is no tax paid by the buyer so let me show you my payment's going to be 69.23 let's say there's no shipping i'm just going to leave that part out for now no shipping no one's paying shipping in this case free shipping um, if the buyer has no tax payment then I'm gonna put 69.23 here as well that means zero tax no tax was paid so in this case all right the profit should be zero if I scroll all the way over you see that the profit is zero okay so this break-even where before I didn't have to think about the buyers tax now I have to think about the buyers tax all right, because that affects the PayPal fee. Okay, so um, that's just something that we have to consider. So this is the break-even. If the tax is equal to zero, if they are going to pay tax, it's going to just throw it off a little bit. Uh, let's say the price. Now, of course, you're not going to price it at that. So let's say your price. Um, let's just say your price is uh, one hundred dollars. It's an easy number to work with. Okay, and let's say the shipping, all right, um, paid by the buyer is five dollars. Then you'll get your payment. Okay, is my payment as the seller is one hundred and five dollars. All right. Um, so then, as an example, actually, I have an image here to kind of help with this. So here's an example. All right, of some orders, right? On the left, eBay gives you your price. This is what you charged, right? Eleven dollars and seven cents on this order, and say here ten sixty two. And then this is what the buyer actually paid when you include the tax. Now, in this case, there was no tax, so what you got and what the buyer paid is the same. But in this case, the buyer paid tax. So the PayPal fee you're going to pay will be based on this, okay, the number, okay, in this order, all right? In this case, this, it doesn't make a difference. It'll just be based on this. But here, they're going to base your PayPal fee on this. So you're going to pay a little more now on your PayPal fee. Uh, let me go back to this. So you'll take that number on the right, and let's say they did add tax to it. Let's say it was $5 tax you're going to have a $110 buyer payment with tax if the tax was $5. All right, but again, looking at the image, the way they give it to you is they give you 
the total with the tax. So you can just put that number right in here. Whoops. Let me go back to the Google Sheet. Okay. So this PayPal fee, $3.49, is based on this. All right. Just to show you. Just for a little proof, right? So you take the 110 times, all right, so 2.9%. That would be 0.029 plus 30 cents. This is how a PayPal fee is calculated. All right, this gives you a PayPal fee of 349, just like you see here, all right? Final value fee is whatever your fee is. It could be 10%. If you have a store subscription, you might have 9.15%. Okay, I have to put the fee in here ahead of time because this is how the break even is calculated. The break even uses the fee as well. So by default, it is 10%. And of course, you can change it to whatever you like. You can change it to 9.15%, 9 for instance, right? Or whatever your PayPal fee is. Okay, I'm going to leave it at 10 for now. All right, so that's your final value fee. Listing fee, um, I mean, I threw that in for people who might sell something once, right? Like if you have an item, you only have one, and you know, then the listing fee might be a thing. If you're selling the same thing 20 times in a month, I mean, um, or even 10 times or five times or three, right? It's, you're only paying that listing fee once, right? It's once a month. So, you know, it wouldn't really make sense to keep counting it over and over again for the same item, but uh, you would more have to look at that as a monthly cost right but it's here if for those uh if it makes sense for your situation the listing fee is here right and it will count as part of fees otherwise you can just leave it uh the total fees are then going to be calculated 1399 find a value fee plus the paypal fee or if you add those two it's going to be 1399 and then that gives the pay after fees so don't forget don't get these mixed up this is your payment this is what eBay gets, the 110. This is your payment, 105. So we're talking about the $105 that you that you charged, right? Which was the price plus the shipping that the buyer had to pay. And then we're subtracting the total fees from that of $13.99. And that's how you're getting this pay after fees of 91. Profit, and then the profit is calculated, okay? The pay after fees minus the actual cost all right so taking this pay that you got this is this is what you actually have right that's yours to keep right after the fees and everything come up all right but then the question is well how much did you really make well that depends how much did you spend to get the product in the first place so that's why i take that number and i subtract this cost right the total cost from the supplier also I subtract the shipping that you paid to send it to the buyer if you paid shipping. In this case, I left it blank, all right, for simplicity. But but it does work if you put a number there. In fact, oh, just to show you, and you've probably seen this before if you've downloaded my uh, sheet before, all right, you'll see that that will change the profit, right? The profit number will change uh, if you pay shipping, right? Okay, put that to zero. Okay, so that's how that works. Uh, two things I added. Um, one is markup, percent of cost, margin, percent of sale. Okay, so markup meaning what percentage of what you spent to get the item, all right, did you make in profit, right? So you take the profit of $31 and you just divide it. It's just divided by the actual cost, right? So it's like... I made about half of the item, well, you know, whatever the item costs, it's like I made about half of it in profit, right? $31. It's about half of 60. Margin, on the other hand, is percent of sale. So we're looking at, okay, what percentage of the actual payment that I received, right? So what, if you take the profit and you compare it to the actual payment that you got, that you received, the $105, what percentage of that actual payment, you know, did you get? That's your uh, margin, right? Which is a good way to um, kind of evaluate um, and kind of predict 
uh, how much money you're going to make. If you know that you do a certain amount in sales and you know that you have a certain profit margin, then you can kind of calculate how much you're going to make. Okay. So, um, so you can basically use this item by item either to predict or you can use it to record as well the profits you made all right on individual orders right so there's different ways you could use this um this is another thing i added this ebay item number um basically the idea is that if you have an item let's say let's pretend this is the item from the first row all right every item has an item number if you go down on the list in i'm going to take this right click copy go back here use control v to paste it and there's your item number and this formula okay creates an automated link to that item such that when you click that link it will bring you straight to the listing for that item all right so just a little additional uh thing that you can use to get back to your item if you want to view your item all right um after recording your data or whatever you uh plan to do with this and um that's pretty much it i mean i have a lot of other uh empty rows here okay being that it's a google sheet i try to provide a certain amount of empty rows that you can use right so it's a certain amount of empty rows um almost a thousand all right being that it's a google sheet all right um you can pretty much just fill it in and be careful not to erase the formulas because of course formulas uh these aren't protected right but if you did erase a formula um as long as you have at least one good formula you can use this to copy it okay you can go like this and drag use the fill handle and that will you know like if say I, let's say i accidentally delete this formula okay you can just take this and copy it down like that okay so that is the Google Sheet in a nutshell. Um, I'd like to also take a look at the uh, Excel Sheet. Okay. Um, now the Excel Sheet, there are a few differences, right? Now the columns are the same. In fact, I actually made the Google Sheet first and then downloaded it. Uh, well, with the updated version, at least. I made the Google Sheet, downloaded it to Excel, and just added a few things. One thing that's different is you'll notice um, immediately that I have a filter here. Okay, I used a table format, which basically means that certain things are going to be a little bit more automatic. Now, these are protected by default. So if you try to edit a cell that has a formula in it, it's not going to let you. Okay, I did that as uh, to help protect the sheet and prevent people from accidentally deleting formulas. You can still fill in all of this stuff. All right. Um, I'll just fill something in here. But one difference I want to point out with Excel, with the Excel sheet, the actual Excel version, you can go to review, unprotect to remove the protect. Okay, I decided to leave this one open, no password, because I realized I've had people contact me and say that they wanted to add a column, you know, for cashback or whatever they wanted to do. And I said, okay, I didn't really think about people making their own changes in the past, so... Um, it's going to be protected just initially, but you can go to review, your review tab, and click unprotect. Okay, so it's, when it's protected, it looks like this. You can go to review, unprotect sheet, and now it's, here it is. Okay, it's good to go. Um, but one difference I want you to see, being that this is a table, there's actually a few differences. Anytime you add something at the bottom, it's going to automatically... Like, let's say you get to 50. If you put something, um, I'll just put a name of a supplier here at the bottom. All right. It will automatically add another row with the formulas and everything. All right. So this is one advantage of having the actual Excel file. And that's only one small thing. Um, another thing is you have this, being that this is a table, formatted table, you can go to table design. All right, table design, total row. You click on that, table design, total row. And this allows you to total anything that you'd like. For instance, 
it doesn't make sense to total certain things, of course, right? Mathematically. But um, my payment is something you might want to total, which right now is zero, but so to some, right? Or 25, because I have 25 at the top, right? And if you, as you do more payments, it's going to sum everything in here, right? So you can sum anything you want. You can sum fees, you can sum, and you just select. You have sum and you have average, right? You have sum and you have average. So you can do sum and you can do average. You have different choices, right? You have final value fee, you have total fees. Um, of course, the profit. You might want to sum your profit as well. And at the top, the very top, you have filters. If you only want to see certain results for supplier, you know, you can click this, turn everything off, and you can select just that supplier. Like if you had Amazon, it'll only show you the Amazon supplier, uh, the roles with Amazon, right? So, of course, if you, you would have way more here if this was filled in, right? In fact, I'll just quick, let me just quickly add one. Let's say you had Walmart here, right? So you can select, turn them all off, and then just turn on the one that you want, right? When you want them back, you do select all. Okay, that's a filter. You can, yes, you can do a filter on the Google Sheet as well. You just have to highlight across. Okay, so I'm back on the Google Sheet. You highlight data, create a filter. Okay, it might kind of mess with your text a little. You have to adjust this, right? So, like, you know, Google Sheets is a little different from Microsoft Excel. There's a few differences such as this, right? So, actually, I'm going to undo that. But, eh, well, that's nah, no biggie. Okay, so, I mean, it's the same idea, right? It works the same way. It's just that they have check marks, you know? So, you can clear it. And then you can select the ones that you want, right? Or you can select all. You click OK, all right? You just select your options. All right, so that's basically how that works. Um, yeah, so, um, yes, that is how that works. Um, as usual, I have the eBay fees here, the PayPal fees. Breakdown, just so you understand it. All right, and so these are some of the updates. Um, so I will... Or perhaps um, if you're watching this video, I, by the time you watch this video, I might have already sent out a link uh, to this new updated version. But one thing I, I mean, I just really have to point out again is this thing with the tax. Um, you have to put a number here for this to work, for things to work. Okay, you have to put a number here. So if there's no tax, I have to keep reiterating. If there's no tax, you need to just take whatever numbers here and just copy it. Okay, again, let's look at the example, right? You see this example where there's no tax. They didn't add any tax. That's why these two are the same. Here they added the tax. If I was doing this one, I would have to take this number with the tax and I'd have to put it over here, right? So I just have to keep emphasizing that it's not going to work because this PayPal fee is not based on this payment. It's based on this. Okay, eBay is now, ch they're charging you the PayPal fee based on the buyer what the buyer paid okay what the buyer paid including the tax when you add up the tax together okay so it's very important same thing here ah if i go back to excel sorry same thing here it's very important that i put 25 if there's no tax very important i just copy that number okay so you can't just leave it blank that's my point all right, my point is you can't just you cannot just leave it blank. You have to put that number there. Okay, um, I think that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Uh, if there's anything else, you can always contact me. Um, if you're a subscriber, you should have a message from me already. Um, my email will also be in the description of the video. And um, thanks for watching. And definitely make sure you have an updated copy of these two. The Google Sheet or the full Excel sheet. And uh, thanks for watching. Take care.